Welcome. You're listening to Sports Ecom 101, the show where we discuss sports topics from a business perspective. I'm your host, Edward Brown, along with my co-host, Russell Jackman. At each commercial break, we're going to ask a sports trivia question. Today's trivia theme is Baseball M. Oh, well, oh. It, it, listen, we're, we're, we're just about to get into the World Series. We have to have a couple Start of... The NBA. NBA. The NBA starts today. I know. We'll, we'll, we'll get into the NBA. The NBA is no. a nice long season, too. Not Don't worry. often enough. Not, not frequently enough. Well, if you came to me with some questions that we could throw on, I would be glad to be the person... I do, I do have a trivia question for you. Okay. Mr. Man. Yeah, so so smart. I'll throw that at you at the uh, at, at, at the, the break. At, at we go for a break. Yes. All right. Okay. When we come back, a uh, couple of things to talk about. Of course, uh, Super Bowl potentially in London. Holy smokes! I wonder what that's going to be like. Okay. Uh, Bill Belichick is uh, being oh, he finally got his three hundredth win, being offered a lucrative contract to remain in New England. It's like what's his record in now? Two and five or something. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, but he did just get that huge win against the Bills, so yeah, that, to get number three hundred. But I, I don't know; it, it just it just seems like these guys that they're 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 hangers on, you know. I mean, yeah, he, uh, I, listen, he's been a very good coach when he had Brady and all that, and you can't just blame him all the time when if the players don't uh, uh, come to the to, to come to play, so to speak. But it seems just kind of interesting to I don't know how long has he been around now. Gosh, like 30. now it's like, yeah, in the 30 year range. 30 year range. Okay. And uh, what was going on with the pregame fighting for the 49ers and the Browns and the Cowboys and the Chargers? Uh, Niners have to start thinking more about getting in fights, you know, uh, fighting more to stop other teams from scoring and from making us look like fools like the Vikings did last night. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Super. Super I, bitter about that. I, I, Extra and, bitter. Yes, me too. Okay. All right. Stay with us. Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back. Don't touch that dial. Right at the forefront. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Edward Brown here along with Russell Jackman. So uh, we, we, when we cut to break, we were just starting to, to get into the fact that the 49ers against uh, the Vikings. Um, I'm going to throw something out here. So first of all, Brock Purdy is showing that he's human. And I'm uh, wondering... A lot. Of, if a lot of this has to do with the elbow issues, um, that you know. No, suffered. no. Last night, did you watch the game last night? Yeah, I did. Well, those throws had nothing to do with the elbow. Those were purely bad decisions. The two interceptions in the fourth <laughs> quarter were just raw bad decisions. They were um, just. I, I don't know. They, the last one seemed like he just he threw it behind him. That's a bad decision. Well, yeah, yeah, no, but that could be that could be, you know, if they, I don't uh, think it's physical. I don't think it's physical. I think he uh, has he showed the week before against Cleveland that he was capable of making a good drive yeah. down the field. And that, you know, our field goal kicker, who is also in, you know, an enigma, um, you yeah. know, who can he, he can't hit a 40 yard field goal, but he can kick a 55 yard field goal. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's that's the kind of thing why roll aids was invented. <laughs> is, is, is when you've got a kicker that can't hit a 40 yarder, but can't hit a 55 yarder. Yeah. Um, you know, and then a guy who hadn't thrown any interceptions in five games yeah. throws three interceptions in two games, two and, and really. The two interceptions last night were absolute busters. They just yeah. absolutely killed. But I, I'm, I'm actually uh, more unhappy. I don't think it's his, but I don't think it's his injury. I really don't. You know, he okay. looked fine yeah. against Dallas. He looked fine against the Giants. Yeah. He looked fine against the Rams. He looked fine against the the Cardinals. So that's not where I'm placing blame. He just he is still only twelve game regular season games in as a uh as a quarterback and those kind of though i hate to say it those were jimmy garoppolo type throws yeah yeah i yeah that's what that's where, what where everything is going well and you have a good drive going and then he throws one where you just say who is he throwing to 
There was nobody yeah. other than the the Minnesota backfield. That, Unless that the now, now sometimes what happens is uh, the receiver alters his route when he shouldn't. I didn't see but, that last night. I, I, I didn't see that either. That does happen sometimes. But you yeah, know, no, I, I got to say though, I'm, I'm I'm very unhappy with our secondary. I say our because uh, Russell and I come from the Bay Area and we're 49er fans. You know. Um, I know Ward had that one interception, which was kind of cool, but then he, he lost it on the other one. Um, but it, it's, I don't know. Our, our, I think about guys like Ronnie Lott and Eric Davis and the guys from the eighties who, you know, you always felt comfortable that they were going to do a great job in the secondary. These guys here, every time the, the quarterback goes back to pass against the 49ers, I'm always scared. Well, it's, I, I would be less scared, but our pass rush, absolutely disappeared last yeah. night there were no sacks on on cousins yeah and, and it also doesn't help that our head coach has these starry eyes for kirk cousins and that there's this weird love affair between shanahan and kirk what do, cousins. What do you mean? he always he kirk, kyle shanahan has always like loved the idea uh he wanted to trade Garoppolo for Kirk Cousins earlier in their careers. And, yeah. and that didn't happen. And he's always praised him on, you know, the microphone and, and said that he, you know, he wished he had a quarterback like Kirk Cousins and, and so on and so forth. How, so how did that affect the last night's game though? I think that he just is so enamored with Kirk Cousins game that he doesn't coach a good game against him. Well, and, but, but I mean, you know, the defense, the, the front line is still going to try to sack the quarterback. You well, know? they, I don't know if they did try all that hard last night. <laughs> no, they definitely got good blocking. And apparently yeah. Vikings, who were not a good running team, they just dominated in that era. Well, and we had a rookie. They had their rookie score, more, get more yardage against us than like he was in the same classes as like Randy Moss and, yeah. and, and yeah. Jennings. You know, uh, they're, 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 so it was a real breakdown on all fronts for the 49ers. They, I really thought they would come in there, especially because of their injuries on offense. Yeah. I thought the defense was really going to step up and make up, make the difference for the offense not being there. And to me, that might be the kind of thing that keeps them from getting to a Super Bowl. If they, yeah. if their defense yeah. is not, if they don't have the kind of defense they can step up when the offense is not playing well, because here's the thing that people forget about Joe Montana. And, and, you know, you say you're, you're, you're a fan, but I'm, I'm like a dying 49er, like hardcore, you know, <laughs> and, and go back to the days of, of, uh, of, uh, Gene Washington. No, Jim, <laughs> Jim Plunkett. You know, I, I, I did watch a number of, you know, when I was growing up, the Plunkett yeah. years, the uh, yeah. the O.J. Simpson years, oh, yeah. okay. you know, those were really hard times. And sure. and the one thing is that with Joe Montana, there were two big things about Joe Montana that made him special. One is when he played poorly, he still found a way to win, yeah. and that was <laughs> that was one thing. You know, everyone thinks that every game Joe Montana played. He won 55 to nothing. No, he, he won a lot of games, 21 to 17 and, yeah. and uh, 24 to 21 and, and, you know, 14 to seven. I mean, there were a lot of games like that. And that's when, when Joe Montana wouldn't get it done, guys like you were talking about, like Ronnie Lott and yeah. Fred Dean and yeah. Tina Turner and Merton Hanks and, yeah, you know, some Hanks. really legendary Hall of Fame corners and defensive yeah. players were able to step up and get the job done when Joe wasn't doing a good job or I was having sure. an off game. And right now I don't see that. I don't see the defense saying, you know what, we're going to take this one on our shoulders and get what needs. Although they only gave up six points in the second half last night. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so a lot could be said about that. I, you know, we also have been very ineffective in third quarters. Um, against Cleveland, we had three yards total. But, but they were, weren't they really a, a strong third quarter uh, team before? 
Yeah, with yeah. Garoppolo they were. And well, oddly well, enough, yeah. they yeah. really well, like well, you know, also McCaffrey fumbling at the you know two yard line. Yeah, right. and yeah. that takeaway, the the yeah. uh, uh ward, you know, at the right yeah. at the end of the half, uh the first half, when Ward had the ball taken away from him and ran right down for 75 yard touchdown to end the, the half with yeah. the that one rookie wide receiver. It's just so many things that fall out of place in a 17 yeah. game NFL season, which makes you, you sure that we're not going to see another undefeated football team. Yeah. You know, yeah, exactly. yeah. All the way through. It's just too yeah, They're going to break out the Miami Dolphins uh, 72 champagne again. Uh, right? yeah. But they only <laughs> had a 14 game season. I think if you added yeah. three more games onto their season, they probably wouldn't win. Or won all well, yeah, yeah. It's interesting because New England, they won everything. Except for the Super Bowl, the one that right. the Giants. Right. That's the okay, are you, are you ready for our first commercial break here? And by the way, when we come back, definitely want to talk about some NBA and uh, talk a little bit about uh, the Rangers uh, uh, getting oh, yeah. into the World Series, which uh, tonight, uh, we're recording this on Tuesday, uh, is going to be either Philadelphia or the Diamondbacks. So all the games have been pretty, uh, it's, I mean, let's put it this way, it's been exciting that they've, it's gone seven games. Okay, yeah, yes, but last night's game was a clobbering. Yeah, that was. Okay, you ready? And then the uh, uh, the visiting team won uh, every game. That's only happened, I think, one other time. Okay, you ready? Uh, baseball M's, all right, M. This M, letter M, uh, began his Hall of Fame career with the Houston Colt 45s in 1963. Uh, I'm out. You, I'm you know out. This? You know this? Now I'm done. I'm yeah, well, done. Hold, on, hold on. He would later win two National League MVP awards as a second, second baseman with another team. Who is this player that later became a TV baseball commentator? You should know this. All right, stay with us. Sports Econ 101, I'll be right back. Don't touch that dial. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. I'm Edward Brown, along with Russell Jackman. Here's our first trivia question. Again, uh, the, names, the last name starts with the letter M. All right. This M began his Hall of Fame career with the Houston Colt 45s in 1963, which, by the way, they ended up changing it to the Houston Astros after building the Astrodome. OK, uh, he would later win two National League MVP awards as a second baseman with another team. Who is this player that later who later became a TV baseball commentator? And if you're if you need another hint, hint. Think about the golf tournament that we've been doing. Come on, Russ, you know this. Who's the celebrity golf tournament uh, we, we've been doing the last couple of years? Oh, uh, uh, um, damn. Uh, Five, four, three, two, one. Joe Morgan. Joe Morgan, okay. Yeah. I, th I thought it was, I thought Joe Morgan was on St. Louis. No, no, no. So he started with the Colt 45, who used to call 45s, and then uh, he got uh, traded to the Cincinnati Reds, the big red machine. The Reds, the Reds. Yeah. I, I, I had he no was a idea. Red uniform. Yeah, I had was... no idea he ever played for Houston, ever. Or the really? Colts. Oh, yeah, no, that's where he started. No idea. That one I, was I right think was, I think he played with them until like 1968 or something like that. After that, I have to look back. Being born in 67, I didn't remember. So. Oh, come on. Come on. You know, Bill Mazeroski hit a home run to win the World Series in 1960. No. no. So, seven but, against the Yankees. But here, I do have a trivia question for okay, you. Go ahead. Why are fantasy teams known as rotisserie leagues? It's because they keep changing all the time. No. No. Okay. Tell me. Because way back when, a bunch of nerds from New York City uh, were in college and they were playing this fantasy baseball stuff, the statistical baseball stuff, and they met at a at a, a restaurant called the La Rotisserie oh, in New York okay. City. And and, and then, wasn't it? And was baseball the first fantasy sport? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but that, but. Ro but rotisserie came from really where they met as a at yeah, a restaurant. Interesting. I always thought that too. I thought it had yeah. something to do with the rotation, yeah, or sure. the fact that it was it was a revolving thing, or the, yeah, the exactly. way the draft well, or anything. What year, what year was that? 
It's like in the 40s. They did. They had fantasy baseball yeah. stuff in the 40s. Yes. yes. I didn't know that. I mean, so, I do know that I, I have seen old, like old, not old. Um, I mean, it's not that old. It's probably like 30 years old uh, TV shows where they would, um, you know, do it would be sort of a kind of pretend. Uh, actually, I think it was more in the radio, like pretend baseball. All right. You got Babe Ruth up to yeah. bat again, right? Yeah. And, uh, against yeah, Roger I mean, Clemens. The stats <laughs> have always been there. And the yeah, math has true. always been there. So it didn't yeah. require, you know, they would just have to do all the stuff by hand, you yeah. know, uh, but back then they had the time to do it. And, you know, they, they, they would just a lot of time, sometimes I know they would do it, you know, by, by phone, you know, they would just call each other up by phone. Oh, yeah. And so now, and, I mean, fantasy football is just way surpassed. Fantasy oh baseball. God, yes! It's it's a it's a multi billion. It some point in time, it must get as big as the NFL itself. Wow! Which, you know, yeah, that's, that's a, crazy. I I know that you know. That being said, I, my my fantasy football team is in dire shape now at two and five. So I'm I'm gonna need some some real miracles. Well, what's the best them. record you've ever had finishing a, a league? Oh, I once went. I once went six points away from a perfect season. Wow. I lost my first game and then I won the next 14 games in a row. Wow. That's impressive. And I will tell you this, I created a ghost team last year that I didn't touch at all. And it won a super. Bowl. <laughs> I just, I just, from, I forgot about it. I created a that's team funny. and I forgot that I had it. And then I found it again. And by the time I found it, they were 12 and five and they won. They actually won the Super Bowl because the final game of the season was cut short because of that. It was that Buffalo game where the guy got hurt. Oh, De uh, DeMar Hamlin. Yeah, with DeMar Hamlin. So all the stats were frozen after the first quarter. That's how oh, wow. most fantasy football leagues had to deal with it. They just said the game but, counts, but you only yeah. get... So, so I was actually facing uh, uh, Joe Burrow and oh, yeah. he got why well, he wound up with only like a quarter's worth of statistics and, and, and that allowed me to win my game. So, so, so. is there, is there, are there like rules or is there a, a lots, lots and lots and lots of rules. Wait, who sets the rules though? Uh, well, I, I play with the NFL league. So okay. the NFL has its own fantasy rules on, you know, what the scoring is and if there is a, a cancellation of a game, you know, or a suspension oh, yeah. of a game. How yeah, I'm, a, I'm afraid to get involved with it because I think I'd be too like spending too much time on it. I mean, how much that's time do you the problem. How much, how much time do you spend? No, no, no. That's not the spending the time that's the problem. It's the emotional toll when you suck. <laughs> that's the problem exactly. which is why is, i don't gamble anymore i know and 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 yeah. the way the niners lost last night proved to me that gambling on sports you just don't want to do in fact the yeah. week before that when when cleveland beat the 49ers and the jets were able to beat the eagles yeah, yeah. i mean that was upset specially sure. that was like everyone who bet money on the big favorites lost, you know, pretty much, you know, it was, yeah. it was a lot of where, you know, you, you, and then, then, you know, the NFL was saying every, all the pundits were saying, you know, Dallas is the best team ever. And then they play the Niners and then that ends that. And then everyone <laughs> says the Niners are the best ever. and The Eagles, the best ever. And they lose to the Jets. They lose to Cleveland. And then everyone was saying Detroit is the best. And then they yes, got him. No. So it's, you know, People, the, the the sometimes the pundits like myself should just shut the hell up. Well, they, and they and they don't. Uh, you, you don't hear too much. Uh, the the Raiders are the best. That well, is. not with Garoppolo being. Although you know, uh, uh, maybe moving to a new quarterback might be their their next best. Yeah, option. I mean, you know, no offense to Jimmy G, but uh, I think uh, that tie, that the, the tread on the tires is fine. Yeah, that's that. I think that ship has sailed. Um, so before we get to our, our next break, uh, just really quickly about the uh, uh, baseball. So uh, by the time we start doing uh, next week's show, Bruce uh, World Series is going to start. Who do you do you think? Uh, you think it'll be the Phillies or Diamondbacks getting against? I'm them? rooting for the Phillies because I really don't want to root for anything in Texas. But man, Bruce Bochy is 
the the manager of managers. I mean, yeah, he is. He, it's funny that really the Astros uh, uh, Rangers matchup had so much more press about Bochi against uh, Baker. Dusty Baker, yeah, which is about the Dusty. players. And Dusty, first- he's like zero for five in seven game in game sevens. It's not good for him, but he did win, yeah. you know, win it all last year. True. So he got the monkey off his back, but yeah. it's just, it's true. He, he, when he goes up against the legendary coaches, he winds up losing. You know, he goes up against good coaches. He's usually better than the, the good coaches, and he's way better than the bad. Wait, was it Mike Sosha who was the Angels 2000? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he's legendary, but. Uh... Well, I guess not. He had going a hell of a year that one oh, year. Oh, yeah. yeah that, they all put it together. That, that one's. That one's still haunts me a little bit yeah and the so angels just, haven't been anywhere since that you know yeah that stupid rally monkey of like you know <laughs> oh yeah the rally monkey can go <laughs> straight to hell and stay there you know, <laughs> 10th level of hell stay there first giants fans that's not a pleasant memory but right, uh, hey, 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 really quickly before we get to, to uh, break super bowl potentially in london i mean that i'm just thinking what about all the people from the united states having to travel over there i i think it's, well they have the money for it if you have money for super bowl tickets you have money to go to london but it, it yeah. is a little crazy to take one of our premier events exactly. yeah, our, that's it and, yeah. and, and it really does belong in a u.s city and i know that that sounds you know american centric but you know yeah, it's so our Super it's, Bowl, though. Yeah, it is our Super Bowl. Yeah. It is our Super Bowl. I mean, I, it doesn't bother me so much if you take, you know, the Arizona Cardinals versus the Jaguars and throw them in in London, because you know you're trying to. It's like barnstorming. You know, you're trying to right. uh, show the world, and that's co- that's okay because maybe you might get a couple of international teams to join the league, and you know, you do certain things where you you know you get maybe two teams and and a. a, a maybe the three for three weeks um you stay out there uh the teams stay out there uh so that they can play you know a couple of teams you know i mean i i, I get that but um but not the super bowl i i don't I, yeah i don't think so I, I i think that they're getting a little bit too euro crazy yeah. with 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 it um and you know a lot of these players too are saying that these trips to England and Japan and Mexico yeah, oh, yeah. and China. They want to do China. It really wears them out. And the Absolutely. way the schedule is, it is very, you know, you add that that 17th week onto it. Yeah. I don't know. I've been always for the idea of using the preseason games as a way to spend to to showcase in Europe. Uh, yeah, that's actually a really good idea. Hey, tell you what, let's go to our next commercial trivia question here, talking about the letter M, baseball M's. This player was a fixture at first base for the Yankees for 14 seasons. He won the American League MVP in 1985, then after retiring in 1995, became a batting coach. Who is this letter M? I think I think he actually became a manager too, if I'm not mistaken, but don't, don't hold me to that. All right, stay with us. Sports Econ 101. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. One more time. I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Russell Jackman. Our second trivia question, baseball M's. This player was a fixture at first base for the Yankees for 14 seasons. He won the American League MVP in 1985. Then after retiring in 1995, became a hitting coach. And again, I, I think he, I thought he was a manager also, but who is this? person last name starts with an m see i was thinking it was mickey mantle but then he yeah. said 85 so yeah i'm mattingly yes and it was first baseman mattingly didn't he also didn't he also manage oh, i, I, I don't think did. so no maybe just maybe just so. a batting coach yeah yeah i remember some statistic that was like He'd only popped up like 19 times in his whole career. Something we wow. He had a really wow. good eye, really good eye. Um, wow. All right, so now let's move on to Russell's favorite topic. Yes, the thank NBA. you. Wrestling. The, wrestling. Oh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, wrestling is the first, yes, and the second is the NBA. Okay, so uh, G- Giannis signs a three-year, hundred and eighty-six million dollar extension, and uh, I, I mean that's just. 
That's sixty-two million dollars a year. Oh, I, I, what that does is that. salary cap. I don't know how that fit, works yeah. with the salary cap, but that's where we are today. I mean, that's double what Steph Curry earns. Yeah, and by the way, going back to football for a minute, Roger Goodell just signed a an extension, and he's getting like sixty-eight million dollars a year. And I'm thinking, for what? What what does he do that gets sixty-eight million dollars that you know anybody else who who would be in charge of the NFL couldn't do? He, he gets people to yell at him and people to say how much they hate him. And by yelling at, at Goodell, they're not yelling at the owners, and so the owners uh, feel that's money that's worth it. So they <laughs> yell at listen, him. I'll be a punching bag for sixty-eight million dollars a year. Exactly. Okay. Uh, um, you know now, what's scary is that. What's scary is that he started off getting paid forty million a year, so he's now earned twenty million more a year to be the worst commissioner in professional sports. Yeah, I think he's the yeah. worst one. Oh, I know. I, 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 I totally agree. But the problem uh, is that even though he's he is you know uh, uh, he he's like the captain of the Titanic. Except that the Titanic is running into oil wells now, and you know, <laughs> and, and gold mines instead of uh, instead of uh, 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 icebergs, and yeah. and he's just the NFL makes so much money now that he yeah. just stands there and says, you know, I'm the lucky guy that's you know ahead of this ship, yeah. and I get the the raise because I have the the product has gotten so. So, yeah, but it's not, so, I mean, it's not him though. He's just a freaking commissioner. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, he's the luckiest man in the oh, yeah. universe, in the history yeah. of the universe. Well, I, 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 you know, I was thinking about people, you know, taking, you know, fall guys type of thing when you mentioned about the, you know, he stands in between the owners. Uh, I was just thinking about wasn't after the Cleveland game a bunch of the 49ers or the head, uh, they, they said that they wanted the whole referee crew to get fired. Sure, but he didn't do anything about it. Yeah, you know um, that's the whole thing. Is he never he never does anything and gets paid another extra twenty million dollars. So <laughs> before I go, I have a connection, let's talk about more about the NBA. Okay, which I mean, it starts which tonight. I, I I do have to say that the uh, uh, the remember how we were talking with uh, about fighting with you know Forty ers Browns and all that pregame fighting. Yeah. Uh, apparently, they are going to uh, act right away with some potential disqualifications. Which, okay, finally, they're taking a stand and saying, hey, you know what? No fighting, at least before the games. <laughs> it's kind of ridiculous. Okay, so now your your second favorite topic is the NBA. Uh, what do you think of the Spurs, Victor Wemby? He, uh, I saw him in the preseason game against the Warriors. And yeah. he, he, he is scarily good yeah. and really ready. I didn't think he'd be so ready out of the box. I'm sad to say that I think San Antonio may have found their next Tim Duncan. Yeah. And and as a Warriors fan, I don't want to, but I'll give credit to Popovich. He really sat through like almost a decade of not very good Spurs basketball. And I think he could have, and I wondered when he was going to quit and sail off into the sunset and just say, look, I've got my five titles. I'm never going to find another Tim Duncan again. And, you know, I, you know, enough with, and, and after, you know, uh, Kawhi Leonard left, he really yeah. didn't have anybody that was a star. And now really? he has another guy that looks like, I, there's no doubt about it. I've never seen such a young, skilled, big man. Uh, yeah, because even, I mean, LeBron is kind of a big guy, but uh, not a no, He's not seven, eight. He's no. not, he's is that not helpful? Seven. Wemby is I or he's like seven five. I guess he's seven five. five. Wow, that's just incredible. That's almost I know. I really I gotta I say, mean, even Yao ball. Ming, Yao Ming didn't have the outside shot and didn't have the power, the blocking power that that I see from Wen yeah. Young. Well, isn't his wingspan like eight feet or something? Ridiculous? Yeah, it's crazy. But he knows <laughs> how to use it. He knows how to use it. Yeah. I mean, Manu Bowl had that same wingspan, but he was as, as thin as a stick. Yeah, you know, and, 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 and and this guy, he this uh, and Wemby, is he? How old is he? Like nineteen or something? Yeah, Jeez, but he's, he he's very skilled. He, yeah. you know, uh, 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 I've always been fascinated with the story of Manu Ball. I read his biography, uh -huh. and it, it, he's he, 
the very first time Manu Ball knew so little about basketball because yeah. he always played soccer. The yeah. very first time he went to dunk, he actually broke all his teeth on the rim. <gasps> I didn't know that. Yeah. Because he didn't know, uh, you know, he, he didn't have control. He just thought, you know, he didn't realize that just by jumping, his head would be like in danger of the rim because he's so tall. I didn't even have to, really have to jump like two feet. Did that air. happen? Did that happen like in a game? No, like, no. When, back when he was in, in Africa. Right. Oh, you know? gotcha. Wow. Yeah. But like the very first time that, you know, he played in the playground. A, a, a metal hoop on it. He just he jumped so high and so fat, hard that he broke his teeth on the rim. So, <laughs> but that you know, and a guy like Elijah one played soccer most of his life yeah. until he got you know played basketball. But Web Mignogna has been playing basketball. Like him and Giannis are guys yeah. that just grew up their whole lives, even though they're not from the United States, but they grew up their whole lives playing basketball. So they come into the NBA with a lot of solid skills. And, and, uh, and Wemby, Wemby's from France, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah he is. Yeah, he is, you know. Um, but he had guys like Tony Parker to look up yeah. to and stuff like that. So it's, it's, you know, getting to the point where, you know, these guys from other countries have as much raw, basic oh, yeah. experience going in. Djokovic. Some, you yeah. Know, Ancic, I mean, yeah you, I mean, there's some really talented. But it's funny, you don't see that many of them go into football. There's a lot no. of baseball, you know, mostly from Dominican Republic, you know, Caribbean type uh, areas. But, football uh, doesn't want yeah, guys who are seven five, though. I mean, football no. is not a, a sport where you need. I mean, yeah, there's Ed Two Tall Jones, you know, if you remember him. Yeah, of course I do. The day. But then most football players tend to be smaller and more compact, and and you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, fire plug type guys are more. Uh, you know, or they're long, they're lean and they're thin, but they're fast, like wide receivers, you know, yeah. but I mean, no one's really dealt. I don't think there's ever been like a seven foot tall quarterback ever, you know? No, but I tell you that, that uh, the height really helps a lot because you get too many, like Doug Flutie, unfortunately was so small that, you know, you easily block a lot of his passes. But uh -huh. if you have a lot of ankle and knee to be able to get, rolled into or attacked yeah. then you know then, and you're not fast enough then you know that's the problem with i think a lot of uh the seven footers is they just don't have that raw speed to get out of the way you don't want a big target you know yeah. for people to 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 attack but anyway i think web mignon is going to be a big success and, and i'm concerned as a warriors fan because this is uh, i think this year more than any year we have so many franchises that made such big deals in the off season. Oh, yeah. and they're kind of like, we got to win the NBA title or bust. I mean, yeah. there's the Lakers, you know, really need to win an NBA title or what's going to happen there. Uh, Miami has a lot of pressure going to the NBA finals, but not winning. How long can Jimmy yeah. Butler stand it? We've seen uh, uh, Milwaukee make big deals and throw down big money. And they now have Damian Lillard there. You have uh, 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 the Warriors, obviously, you know, betting a lot on on Chris Paul. You have uh, the Suns. I know, and it's like Chris Paul, how old is he? Like thirty eight or something? Thirty eight, but he's looked great. Yeah, in the I mean, you got to get. I mean, you know, listen, thirty eight to me is still young, but you know, uh, to play basketball a lot, uh, you know, he's, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, they got him. I think they got him too late in his career. But um, what? About, and then the Nuggets extend a backup center. Uh, with a four year, $32 million contract for a backup center. Holy crap! <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's the price of doing business. I mean, you know, I guess the the best thing for them is that they don't need him <laughs> they, yeah. they, 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 because they joke it runs the show there. If he gets hurt, then that's going to end everything right well, okay, there. Also, you know, you give him a break, right? I mean, you know, you got right. to give a guy a rest. Right, but it's you know the, I think the, the, they're kind of hoping that that's an insurance policy they don't need because you yeah. know Denver has the pressure on them being you know repeat champions. Yeah. The Suns have bet a lot on Durant and making sure, and they made some big trades in the off season trying yeah. to get their Portland. You know, has changed their whole outlook to try to you know live life without Lillard. Um, you know, yeah, there's a lot of teams that that have you know pushed Memphis. 
you know, made some big trades, oh, yeah. and big deals. A lot of teams are kind of all in on this season to win a title. That's and good. Obviously, only one can win. Only one can win. Yeah. And I am going to wonder, like Philadelphia, Boston, what's going to happen if those teams don't win titles? I mean, they, Boston's another good one of a team yeah. that, you know, went to the NBA Finals a couple of years ago. has <laughs> been a disappointment. Are they going to just blow up the cloud and, you know, go with – all sorts of, you know, send all their uh, best players in different directions, start over again, or do they try to, you know, make one more run? I mean, you know, Jason Tatum is too young. Same thing with like Devin Booker for, uh, for, for uh, the Suns. Uh, Suns yeah, you know, no, I, I think this is going to have a lot of intensity because a lot of teams are feeling like if they don't get it done, the whole thing could get torn apart and, 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 and restarted all uh, from asunder. So, yeah, but I like that though. You know, I don't like yeah, it'll it'll be <laughs> intriguing, especially it you all starts take, tonight. You can't take from the from the get go, right? Oh, we're gonna just write off the season from the get go. It's like no, you can't. well, you know, the teams that have had the worst records have not gotten the highest draft picks. I mean, San Antonio was not the worst team in the NBA last year, and they got the number one overall draft pick. Plus, I don't think coming down the, the line that there's a Weminyana type player that's 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 funny a phenom that's yeah. going to change a franchise so you know I, we've gone through a couple of years where the top draft pick hasn't really amounted to very much uh okay. and, and hasn't really you know maybe anthony edwards will help minnesota but they're kind of he's good but he's not he's not web Mignana type good you know okay. and it's not yeah. Anthony Davis type that or, or you know someone that okay hey, hey Russell let's let's get to our uh, last commercial trivia question here okay this, this pitching M won four consecutive National League Cy Young awards amongst two different teams who was this Chicago Cub and Atlanta Brave oh okay that one I you know this one all right stay with us Sports Econ 101 we'll be right back with some closing comments don't touch that dial Welcome back to Sports Econ 101. Last time for today, I'm Edward Brown, your host, along with Russell Jackman. Our third trivia question is Baseball M. This pitching M won four consecutive National League Cy Young Awards amongst the two different teams. Who is this Chicago Cub and Atlanta Brave? The mad dog himself, Brad Maddox. Greg Maddox, very Greg good. Maddox, Greg Maddox, hey, hey, Brad by the way, you know, just really quickly, you're mentioning about you know San Antonio and, and all the, the first round picks. I kind of like the way the NBA does it, where they don't just automatically say, okay, the worst team gets the first pick. You know, they it's basically you just get more balls in the uh, in the in the bingo uh, uh, cylinder, right? Yeah. That's a good you way know, to do it because that way it's not automatic. You know, you have a better chance. Yeah, but then again, you you are kind of punishing the. You're not allowing the best franchise a lot of time, the worst franchise to get ahead. I mean, there are times that the worst franchise will drop to like the fourth or fifth pick, and then that really yeah, also you don't get. You know, they can't like purposely tank and and you know just get what a couple of extra balls. Well, okay. they're not even going to, you know, that was another thing is that now this season, we didn't have a chance to talk about it, but the, they're, they have those new roles that you can't sit anyone out for, you know, uh, if they're considered stars. You yeah, know, what they, if they, they, I mean, you know, it's going to happen. Hey, I've got a hangnail. I can't play. No, they're okay. going to apparently, they're going to apparently Stars. really scrutinize. All right. Uh, fair, enough. fair enough. Okay. It's all ready? Popovich's fault. It's okay. All Popovich's that's true. Fault. I remember that. Okay. Here's yeah. our thoughts for the day. So, you know, someone, uh, somebody actually complimented me on my driving today. They left a little note on the windshield that said, parking fine. I, I thought that was very nice, you know? And uh, behind every angry woman is a man who has absolutely no idea what he did wrong. Ain't that the truth? All yeah. right. Tune in next week to Sports Econ 101. We're going to be discussing sports topics from a business perspective and asking more sports trivia questions. Thanks for listening. On behalf of our team, I'm Edward Brown. We're wishing you the best. Adios. So long.